Elliptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm, ECDSA, how it protects your Bitcoin wallet. Did you know that there are 300 million cryptocurrency users around the globe? The cryptosphere is reeling in whopping numbers, but this also means there must be an increase in each wallet software's security measures. This is where the Elliptic Curve Cryptography, or ECC, comes in. It is another robust key-based technique that encrypts and decrypts data by creating paired versions of public and private keys. Using the formula y to the second power equals x to the third power plus ax plus b, the ECC creates digital signatures to secure crypto wallets. Elliptic Curve Cryptography, ECC, is one of the most powerful types of cryptography today, but it is not quite clear to many users. More and more websites use ECC to secure everything from customers' HTTPS connections to how they pass data between data centers. It gets a bit complicated from here, but you will get a good rundown of everything that will help you understand how the system works. After all, how can you trust the security of a wallet software if you don't know how it works? We provide software development, recruitment, and consulting services in the fields of fintech, cryptocurrencies, and blockchain worldwide. If you're looking for a job as a developer, email your resume to jobs at qqnade.com. That's jobs at qqnade.com. Contact us for a free consultation through our website at qqnade.com. If you'd like more details, check out the description below this video. What is a digital signature and how does the ECC help? A digital signature is a familiar term in crypto, so you've probably heard of it. But for those who haven't, it is the digital form of a signature, albeit more secure. A signature on paper will be easily recognized when forged, but with a digital signature, it is impossible to decrypt the code that forms the unique authentication and identity confirmation key. A pair of public and private keys are generated using an asymmetric cryptography technique like RSA or ECC. The RSA was first discovered and named in the late 1970s by three men, Ron Rivest, Adi Shamir, and Leonard Adelman. It is a security system that relies on the inability to perform faster at factoring instead of multiplying. Here is a quick rundown of how the RSA cryptographic algorithm works. So, a pair of prime numbers are chosen and multiplied to serve as the maximum digit. The maximum number is essential because it helps the computer stay sharp. Despite the efficiency computers represent, they process smaller numbers better. The system chooses two numbers lower than the already selected maximum number for the public and private keys. Let's call them P and Q, where they represent the private and public numbers, respectively. Let us also give them values. P, 19. Q, 29. M, maximum number, 67. To get the public number, you only need to multiply it by itself 29 times, and it will be encrypted. Decrypting is just like unwrapping. You multiply it by itself 19 times and you will get the initial message. However, the RSA is losing relevance because of its inability to keep up with its initial edge. That is the gap between factoring and multiplying. The advancement of technology is also creating more platforms for the bad guys to take advantage of. This is where the ECDSA comes in. So far, it has been impenetrable without revealing too much. We provide software development, recruitment, and consulting services in the fields of fintech, cryptocurrencies, and blockchain worldwide. If you're looking for a job as a developer, email your resume to jobs at qqnade.com. That's jobs at qqnade.com. Contact us for a free consultation through our website at qqnade.com. If you'd like more details, check out the description below this video. And it exists for one and only one reason, to verify the authenticity of your identity without creating any room for security breach. It presents you with an algorithm that allows you to attempt the use of your private key privilege without opening an unguarded back door. Everyone can access your public key. And in cryptocurrency, it is often the wallet that is used to receive funds. The system works so that an attacker can never discover the point of origin generated by your private key. 
The graphical representation is a symmetrical curve and concepts such as the point addition and multiplication of the chosen random number create the secure environment for your tokens to thrive. How does the ECDSA work? Given the opportunity, the number of tech geniuses that would overrun or modify game applications or other sensitive data is higher than you think. This is why cryptography applications like RSA and ECDSA are essential. The public key is pretty much useless without access to the private key. It grants access to users but does not authorize any change. The private key ensures the original data is protected and cannot be tampered with or altered. When applied to Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency, the signing algorithm will be incomplete making it impossible for you to confirm a transaction. You can receive tokens with your public keys, but you will be unable to access and use them without beating the trapdoor function first. The less complicated aspect can easily be visualized and understood, and here's what to expect. So, you pick a point on the elliptic curve graph, any point. This is the generator that creates more complex keys. And the rule is that you can use the inverse of the algorithm to decrypt the signature. The points generated will appear randomly, resulting from point addition and multiplication. Point addition works by adding two points to your graph and creating a tangent to show their intersection. Then the reverse point or negative value is located on the x-axis. On the other hand, the point multiplication is just as it seems. A point of origin is chosen and the dots create an intersection within the curve. The process continues until you plot a graph whose origin point cannot be detected. After a point on the graph is chosen, you generate a private key, represented by P. From that number, you can generate a public key, which we will call Q. The former key is a random number of 160 bits for Bitcoin, while the public is the point generated on your graph. Together they comprise 40 bytes, but they are never sent out together, so the information contained measures 20 bytes each. You cannot use Q to find P, but the ECC will help you use your P to find Q. The digital signature is made of two parts, two equations that the system must complete for verification to take place. And to make it even harder to hack, the inverse of the generated point will be located and marked, serving as the dot on the graph. Something like P.Q equals S, but instead of marking S on the graph, you mark S negative 1. For the algorithm to be fail-proof and genuinely secure, you must choose a prime number for the modulo. The modulo prevents the numbers from becoming excessively large. Smaller storage means it is easier, but also more technical to crack. The way a modulo works is that when your calculations provide an answer that arrives at that sum, it rounds off and begins again from zero, making it even harder. The formula follows, y to the second power equals x to the third power plus ax plus b. And this is what the graph would look like. Pay attention to the symmetric curve. Y to the second power equals X to the third power plus 7 is the equation that guides the use of the ECC by the Bitcoin blockchain. It is impossible for tangents drawn on the graph to intersect at more than three points. This fascinating trick makes it possible for a cryptocurrency wallet to bank on the ECDSA. On the ECC, connecting more than three non-vertical points is impossible. Therefore, you can decrypt the message or code only when you have the correct private key. As with every graph you plot, you must enter the equations to find the required points. The formula for plotting elliptic curve cryptography is y to the second power equals x to the third power plus ax plus b. And to protect your Bitcoin assets, you insert y to the second power equals x to the third power plus 7 to arrive at a public encrypted key and A equals 0 and B equals 7. Now let's say that your maximum number is This is the prime number that the system wraps around before moving to its mathematically determined point on the graph. So when you enter your other variables for A and B, the point of intersection on the graph will be equal to
Compared to the RSA, this is a significantly shorter set of numbers but provides a more secure platform. Your why can be while x equals When these numbers are inserted into the equation, you get a seemingly random dot on the graph. The ECC works by flipping the value to distort its source. Only integers and positive numbers are allowed on the graph, even though you will end up with a collection of random points when you enter all your values. However, you must choose a different security key every time. When this principle was discarded some years back by a group of people signing a digital message, an attacker was able to use their jointly shared and repeated point generator to hack every one of their wallets. So, as much as the ECC makes your private keys impossible to guess, you must also be careful about repeating your point generator. How the ECDSA protects your Bitcoin wallet? Think about it. If private keys, the code that allows access to your cryptocurrency, were easily guessable, the theft rate would be out of this world. Therefore, algorithms like the RSA and the ECDSA are used to make it impossible or technical to guess the number that even generates it. It works so that you can decipher the public key by looking at the private key, but the same cannot apply inversely. During the more technical aspect, that is, the calculation, you cannot use point addition or subtraction inversely either. Or you get a graph that appears to be gibberish and will lose your way before you know it. Here is an idea of what to expect. The image above depicts the graph after choosing your point generator and filling in the other variable. Here is what it will look like in 3D. Anyone with the private key, the right one, will be able to provide the digital signature that proves their ownership. On your end though, that is, if you are not a curious mathematician or developer, you will only need to choose a number. If you're using a custodial cryptography wallet, the 3D representation is kind of what anyone attempting to decrypt your private keys will see. It will be a bunch of dots you cannot reverse because the point of origin is unknown. To understand how the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm protects your Bitcoin, you need to understand what private and public keys are. A private key is a code within your wallet that is known to you alone. You cannot share this key with a third party, and the safety of your portfolio depends on how you protect it. You can rely on a third party platform to protect this key for you, or you can get a hardware wallet and take your private keys offline. Either works, but the elliptic curve and finite fields it uses help make the theft of your funds even more impossible. With the ECDSA, you can use a digital signature to prove that you are the owner of the data attached to the private key and you and millions of other users can execute transactions. The thing about the ECC and protecting your Bitcoin is that your private key should be capable of finding and decrypting your public key. But contrary to what you would expect, a malicious third party cannot use your public key to reveal your private key. Nodes on the Bitcoin blockchain use the order curve and hash function SECP256K1 and SHA256 to protect your funds. The hash function is a unique result of a mathematical equation. It works only for your data and can be used to verify that authenticity. Here is a practical example of how it works. Let's say the hash function chosen is the addition of all the bytes that make up your file. For Bitcoin, it is usually 40 bytes, and initially the data is represented by a number between 0 and 255. But because the values that make up the bytes are particular to each file, if they are summed up and do not tally, it means something is amiss. The numbers are usually a long string that would take serious effort to begin to dissect. There are speculations about how these digits are generated, and it is understandable because this may create a loophole that can result in the loss of millions of dollars. Moreover, the SHA-1 algorithm Bitcoin uses is king because it does not adopt the average mod hash function. Instead, it makes things harder to tamper with because it chooses an unpredictable algorithm. It is not just tricky for the hashing function to be altered, but also ensures a collision cannot happen. In conclusion, 
Elliptic curve cryptography is easier but more technical for protecting your private keys and data. Compared to the RSA and Diffie-Hellman key size, the ECC provides a shorter length without compromising security. And given the increase that accompanies the success of Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency world, more numbers need to be crunched to strengthen the security of tokens in circulation. More energy would also be consumed and coupled with the strain already on the environment from Bitcoin mining, the ECC may be the world's solution. We provide software development, recruitment and consulting services in the fields of fintech, cryptocurrencies and blockchain worldwide. If you're looking for a job as a developer, email your resume to jobs at qqnade.com. That's jobs at qqnade.com. Contact us for a free consultation through our website at qqnade.com. If you'd like more details, check out the description below this video.